Okay guys, it is time for a new update here on the Bitcoin price and I can already tell you I know it is looking today like we are bouncing off the 18,800 to $19,000 level but I can already tell you on the smaller time frames within the last 24 hours we saw a breakdown and we are right now about to confirm it. Guys, I will tell you exactly what price levels we keep an eye on now for Bitcoin to find out if it's time to not only close our Ethereum short trade then guys, I actually closed my Ethereum short trade. We saw a proper pump on Ethereum today. We will talk about the first deflationary week for Ethereum actually in a second as well besides this very interesting on-chain data that I have also prepared for Bitcoin telling us more about where we can definitely find the bottom or expect the bottom for Bitcoin but nevertheless guys we shouldn't talk too much now because we need to jump right into the charts so I can tell you exactly what price levels you should keep an eye on right now besides that guys thank you very much for the amazing support with my last video. I mean, I haven't uploaded in a couple of weeks. I know it was for some personal reasons. And uh, I have to say thank you very much that after such a long time, I'm almost receiving 1000 likes on a video. So many kind comments. Thank you for that. So guys, if you appreciate the content, make sure to subscribe, activate the bell, leave a comment down below and smash up the like button. Maybe on today's video, we can reach the 1000 likes. I would really appreciate it. But now let's talk about Bitcoin. First of all, because that's why we are here. Um, one quick update. As you know, for all my viewers, I had an Ethereum trade, short trade, open in my yesterday's video. It was in a profit of, I don't know how much again, 12000 or something like this, $12,000, something like this approximately. And we closed this short position now already because we saw this bullish news coming out about Ethereum and sometimes such a news can actually lead to a massive, massive pump that the charts not expect. And that's why I decided to just take the profits over $10,000 just to make sure that we are not losing out on that, especially with the situation that we are seeing with Bitcoin here right now. Because when I switch to the smaller timeframes, we can already see what I'm here actually talking about. I'm talking about this beautiful rising wedge. Because what this rising wedge shows us is first of all that we have a nice upward sloping support and a not so strong rising down upward sloping resistance. At some point, these two resistance and supports will meet and then we have a rising wedge, which is a bearish continuation pattern, especially if we are going into it with a big, big dump. So now we actually already saw the breakdown. Yes, you heard that correctly. We are not inside that chart pattern. It's not about to break down. We already broke to the downside. But my number one rule for cryptocurrency trading is that you need to see a confirmation of the breakout because as you know, Bitcoin loves or cryptocurrencies in general love to do the quick fake out out of the chart pattern to just correct into it right afterwards trapping bulls but also bears in making a wrong decision bulls fomoing into the market opening a position too early and bears exiting the market with fear and closing their position too early and that's why this is not we want what we want to do and right now we are still rating for a four hourly candle to close below approximately the 18,800 to 19,000 dollar level. Yes, it is our most important support area anyways. And that's why, although we saw a breakdown here out of a bearish chart pattern, I want to wait till that level is broken to the downside. Although the likelihood just grew a lot within the last 24 hours with this breakdown. What the price level to the upside is that we need to keep an eye on? Guys, it's the $19,300 level. I mean, if Bitcoin manages to pump back inside this chart pattern here once again, it is very possible that for now we will see a small recovery and it is also uh, highly likely that I will scale down my Bitcoin short position then taking a little bit of a loss here that we made in profit with the Ethereum short anyways. I will keep you updated on that within the next couple of days. But we just need to keep in mind that Bitcoin is definitely not looking all too bullish, although on the daily time frame, I know first looking at it, it looks a little bit like we are seeing a perfect bounce here of our 18,800 to $19,000 level. But this can only be a trap because keep in mind that on the weekly time frame, we are definitely still in bearish territory. We saw a potential W. It failed to break out because of our daily bear flag. And what happened then is that we fall below, uh, that we fell below our weekly support. And this for sure means that, uh, I mean, if we see a weekly candle close here below our last weekly candle closes, 18,800, 
yeah, I mean, then we see a confirmed breakout here on the weekly time frame. And I mean, we definitely need to expect a red weekly candle then to come in to finally show us where the bottom then will be. Because guys, I want to talk about this very interesting on-chain data now as well. One quick thing, why was Ethereum uh, pumping harder than Bitcoin now within the last 24 hours and why we should not be all too excited about it? Yeah, I know it was a, a little bit of a positive news event that happened for Ethereum. And it was that Ethereum for the first time since the merge actually finally had a deflationary supply. But why was that? Guys, there was a project. I don't even want to um, name the project's name because it looks like it's some sort of a Ponzi or whatever. Some um, Guys, just something you don't even need to look into. And what we saw there is that a huge amount of people actually tried to FOMO in. And what happened there is that everyone, as always, if Ethereum uh, is getting a lot of transactions into the network and you want to get your transaction confirmed faster, then you need to raise the gas price that you're uh, paying for the transaction. And this means then that this can be like an endless war, a gas war, right, of people just putting up their transaction fees and transaction fees and this just exploding to the upside. Most people are then just saying, okay, I will skip this opportunity or whatever is happening and that I will wait till the congestion in the network goes down again and I can use very little gas fees to do my transaction once again. But this was not the case. A lot of people still try to get their transactions in as fast as possible. And that's why we saw a huge amount of gas fees actually being paid. And the interesting thing is that yeah, I mean, we saw actually for the first time, yes, um, a, a deflationary uh, supply for Bitcoin, which is, I think, a very, very uh, awesome thing. I mean, there's really nothing nothing else to say about it. We really saw um, a massive, massive burn of Ethereum over a, a, a couple million dollars. And this is also why we saw a nice pump here for Ethereum. In total, guys, maybe down the road we will see once in a while, a deflationary week for Ethereum. But nevertheless, guys, I mean, since the merge, most of these events are already priced in. So we shouldn't expect now to have uh, to, that this has any price impact on Ethereum, really. This is only more of a news event that pushes Ethereum uh, today a little bit stronger than Bitcoin. But uh, as you know, Ethereum has been a leading indicator in bear market phases, especially for Bitcoin. And uh, we don't need to pretty much take a look at this bullish move now for Ethereum, thinking that it will lead to a bullish breakout for Bitcoin just because this bullish move on Ethereum is only caused by a somewhat bullish news, right? So just keep that in mind while looking now at the charts. Don't expect uh, Bitcoin to follow Ethereum this time more or less, but I will keep you updated on that in tomorrow's video anyways. Now guys, let's talk about this very interesting on-chain data because this shows us a little bit more what all the different wallet holders are doing in the cryptocurrency space right now. Are they actually buying, holding, accumulating, whatever? And what we can first of all see here is horizontally, as you can see, the top bar is displaying the movement of coins of wallets holding over 10,000 BTC. The second one is wallets holding 1,000 to 10,000 BTC. The third one is 100 to 1,000 BTC. The next is 10 to 100. And then we have 1 to 10. And then we have below 1. And what we can see here is, very interestingly, is that the addresses that are below 1 are actually all the time accumulating. Yeah, They're all the time actually uh, accumulating here already, expecting that the bottom is already in. Now, since quite some time, we are completely evening that out. So selling and buying is completely evened out for addresses with sub 1 BTC. So we can see that there's a lot of uncertainty in the market for the smaller players. The last time we saw an accumulation and then an uncertainty coming in, we saw the next big leg down for Bitcoin. We need to keep that in mind. And what we saw is that also 1 to 10 wallet uh, addresses are right now even going into selling a little bit. So we can see the smaller holders are definitely scared. Even the people holding or the wallet addresses holding 10 to 100 and 100 to 1000 are pretty much still right now relatively inactive yeah, just waiting on the sidelines and not doing all too much. While we saw, once we pumped, when, when we saw that run up all the way up to the $25,000 almost, we can see that almost the entire market was actually completely selling and it was definitely more sell volume and a redistribution happening instead of an accumulation that now just started for wallets holding 1,000 to 10,000 BTC. What does this mean? Guys, if we can see now, 
that step by step, not only our semi-whales, the people with 1000 to 10,000 BTC, start accumulating again, but we can also see that this happens with all of our smaller wallet holders. This would be definitely a very, very good sign, especially if we can see it within the next couple of days. I will keep you updated on this on-chain data because if we are now seeing that for the second time, yeah, we see, or for the first time pretty much, we see an accumulation of all sizes of holders, small and big, while being at crucial support, this could actually be the first opportunity to reverse the price before reaching the $14,000 to $16,000 level. Nevertheless, guys, this is just the start. It's just something we have to keep an eye on because remember, when we saw the pump, almost everyone was selling and also our big, big whales. Guys, can you remember? I showed you this on-chain data a while ago, um, displaying huge movements of coins older then seven years, can you remember that? I mean, this is most likely also here a part of this because it's wallets holding more than 10,000 BTC and they have been redistributing and selling into the market for quite some time while we were dumping here. So it is possible that these wallets here that we are seeing now accumulating, the ones that are holding 1,000 to 10,000 BTC, are only sub wallets of the whales and they are just pretty much already starting to accumulate very slowly again because they know okay the bottom range is somewhere 20,000, 16,000, 14,000 dollars. I know it's a big bottom range but if you expect Bitcoin to go to 100, 200,000 dollars it doesn't really matter all too much and that's why it's very possible that on smaller wallets these big players are already starting to accumulate now a little bit again. But guys, let's just keep an eye on this chart and let's see if everything turns blue again so we are getting more buy volume and more accumulation in than outflow out of these big wallets. So this is something I definitely am going to keep an eye on and I'm going to keep you updated because there we can exactly see what everybody in the market is doing right now and this will always be a sign for what happens next, especially when we are looking at the whales and the very big players in the market. But now guys, as always, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to smash up a like, don't forget to subscribe, activate the bell, leave a comment down below. Keep in mind guys that Ethereum, I know it's a somewhat of a bullish news, but the pump we are seeing today is definitely not a leading indicator for Bitcoin at the moment. The only thing you need to keep an eye on right now is the weekly time frame, right? And uh, the $19,600 level for the end of the week and for sure the $18,800 level for yeah, a potential bearish scenario. And besides that, I mean, I'm just keeping an eye on the smaller time frames, right? The four hourly now. I just want to keep an eye on um, if here our upward sloping past support at the $19,300 level is holding or if we are getting rejected there. And yeah, as soon as we see a four hourly candle closing below, yeah. 18,900, I mean, it's for sure a sign that we need to expect this weekly candle to also close most likely very bearish. And um, yeah, then in this case, we might see another very bearish weekly candle. But we have a couple of days to save the price here. We have a couple of days to switch uh, to accumulation with all the big wallet holders and addresses on the uh, Bitcoin network. So let's just keep an eye on that. And then I will going to update you in tomorrow's video once again. So make sure to subscribe, activate the bell, smash up a like so you don't miss out on any future uploads. And keep in mind that my Ethereum short position is closed for now. I'm risking exactly almost. I mean, we closed the Ethereum short with around $11,700. I'm now right now with $13,000 margin risking this amount at a maximum in my current short position here that I still have open for Bitcoin. But if we break above the $19,300, I will definitely also take a small loss here and scale it down step by step while the market is potentially growing bullish once again for a, yeah, whatever, short term rally again up to the $25,000 level. That's uh, possible. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the content. Keep an eye on the charts. Make sure that you don't miss out a confirmed breakdown if it happens here, because this will definitely be an indicator for some more downside to come and what I'm going to prepare um, then is to scale up my short position. But I will let you know when the time to scale up the short position is in tomorrow's or yeah, the day after whatever I'm uploading now each and every single day again. So subscribe, activate the bell and we are going to see us in the next one. Thank you for watching. Till then, bye bye.